you have watched the minimalist documentary and chance upon Matt Devella's YouTube channel and now you want to start a minimalist lifestyle and you just don't know where to start. Lucky you, I've tried a few minimalist habits and challenges myself. Some are good while others are pretty mediocre. So this video is all about it. And recently, I've asked for your suggestions for some minimalist rules and habits that you will recommend. And I've filtered some of the popular and common suggestions out and created a list of 30 habits and rules for us to rank today. And this is the minimalism tier list. And this tier list might be able to help you figure what are some of the habits and challenges that are worth trying. And if you don't know how the tier list works, let me explain. I've listed down a bunch of rules and habits and I'll rank them based on how effective they are in terms of improving our minimalist lifestyle and how it can help us to live more intentionally. The highest tier is S. They're life-changing actions which I'll highly recommend anyone to try because they will bring us the most value. Next is tier A. They are simple habit which anyone can benefit from, but they are just not as impactful as the first. Tier B, they are not exactly for everyone, but you might want to give it a try to create your own way of minimalism. And the lowest is C. They might not exactly be a minimalist habit. They are the ones that you can skip and avoid wasting your time because they might not provide much value in your minimalism journey. I hope you understand how this concept works and let us rank together. So the first is declutter regularly. I have to say, that's one of the most recommended suggestions. And it's not because it's easy to do, but I think it's really needed for us to constantly look at our surroundings, whether our possessions have become a clutter in our life. Because of that, I'll put it in tier A. It's simple to execute, but not life-changing enough for us to put it in tier S, as it only solves the issue of our current clutter, but it doesn't prevent us from bringing new redundant things into our lives. Next is minimalism game. That's the challenge created by the minimalist. You declutter one thing on the first day, two things on the second, three things on the third, and 30 things on the 30th day. And by the end of the challenge, you will have decluttered 465 items. And this was my first challenge when I started minimalism. And looking back at my experience, I think it's a good challenge, but it might not be something that fit into everyone's lifestyle. And the challenge level can escalate very fast as it reach day 15 and above. And it's not something that can become a habit because not everyone or any time will have 465 items to declutter. And if you have already controlled the things you are bringing in into your life, then this method might not be useful for you. So this will go in tier B. You can try it for the experience but not suitable for everyone. Next will be no spend challenge. I think the no spend challenge is an excellent way for us to control our spending habits, especially if you have some consumerism problem. And it's all done by setting a duration where we can't purchase anything during this period. And I love how flexible it is when it comes to the things you can buy and the things you can't buy. You create your own rule. However, it's still not life changing enough, so it's in tier A. Next is Con Marie. Conmary is a concept I'm not so familiar with, regardless how many people relate this to minimalism. Even their website mentioned that Conmary has nothing got to do with minimalism. But I guess it's still pretty helpful when it comes to organizing, decluttering, and tidy your stuff. And during this decluttering process, it requires one to ask themselves, does this particular thing spark joy? If not, thank the product for serving its purpose and let it go. I think it's a good method for some but a little too sentimental for me which I'll give it a miss. But I'll say something that doesn't suit me doesn't mean that it won't benefit you. There's a reason why this method is used across the globe. So tier B for me. Next will be 2020 rule. Another rule from the minimalist and that's the guideline for one to remove just in case items. If the just in case item doesn't cost more than $20 and won't take you 20 minutes to purchase it, then remove it. It does allow me to identify just in case items, but I don't use it as a guideline for me, so it's a tier B. 1990 rule, another rule created by the minimalist, and it states that if you haven't been using the item for the past 90 days and you don't see yourself using it for the next 90 days, we can safely assume that we won't use it frequently and we might not even touch it anymore in the future so those items can be safely decluttered. And when it comes to rules with specific numbers and figures, they can be kind of too rigid. So I'll put them in tier B because it can be useful to test the water, but it might not be a solution that can fit every other people. 
For example, how frequent one will use their jacket depends on the weather of their country. So these numbers need to be flexible for different lifestyle. The 30-30 rule, also known as the wait for it rule. Same thing, they are created by the minimalist. If the thing you want to buy costs more than $30, we should wait for 30 hours before we make the decision to buy or not. Number rules are there for us to remember it, but it's not that flexible when it comes to different currency and how we value this $30. So it's a tier B for me. Wishlist strategy. One of my favorite because it's simple. Whenever you have the impulse to buy something, instead of making a purchase, write it down in your wishlist. That tells our brain we are doing something, and meanwhile, we just have to wait for the impulse to feed. I'll say it's a simple habit for everyone to try, so it goes to tier A. Also, during Christmas time, this list can be useful for your giver as well. Digital decluttering. Straight up, I can tell you this is the tier S. I can't emphasize how important this can be in the world where we are surrounded by digital distraction. And digital decluttering can be a life-changing experience that can give us tons of benefits. I plan to make another tier list specifically for digital minimalism, but I need to see how well this video performed before I continue to that episode. So let me know down in the comment section. Rule of three. I love this rule because it minimizes redundancy and let us focus on the primary three things that can be used for the habits we want to adopt, the goals we want to achieve, and our to-do list for today. By limiting it into three, it allows us to put our focus on them instead of multitasking through different tasks. So I'll put it in tier A because it helps with productivity, but it's still not life-changing enough. Rejecting gifts. Knowing how to reject gifts is a skill not everyone can master. It's a challenge and this action might seem rude to some. That's why, in order to prevent us from receiving useless gifts, it requires us to have good communication with our loved ones. However, it doesn't mean that all minimalists should reject gifts. I personally appreciate thoughtful gifts and I'll still reject gifts that are redundant. So it's a tier B for me because it's not for everyone and it's not life-changing. Remove sentimental items. When it comes to sentimental items, how we value it varies from one another and depends on the thing itself. I don't think it's terrible for us to have sentimental items, but we need to know how to keep them under control. So this habit is pretty subjective and it's a tier B for me. Experiences over things is one popular mantra amongst the minimalists and I love it. I believe in it as well, but I think this mantra can be misleading. I do agree that experiences are more valuable than most things, but it creates a misconception that a minimalist should reject all the things. That don't make sense because some things can be tools that makes the experience more pleasant and enjoyable. So it's not really for everyone. That being said, I'll put this in tier B. Quality over quantity. I love this mantra as well and I'll be more than happy to always get the highest quality and the long lasting product rather than getting a bunch of low quality products. I think with this mantra, we always ignore our financial concern. There's no point getting the highest quality if it's out of our financial capability. I'll put it in tier B. Next is recycling. I don't think I need to emphasize how important it is to recycle. It's a simple small habit but it helps to reduce the waste we create. Small action but in the long run, it helps the planet a lot. I'll put it in tier A because I think it's not life-changing but I think everyone should adopt this habit and especially when we are doing our mass decluttering. Upcycle. It's kind of similar to recycling but we are reusing things that we want to declutter and change it into something that we can use it. But if it's done wrongly, we might end up creating excuse for us to hold onto things just because we give them another function into it. Sometimes we need to be careful what we upcycle. So in this case, it's not really a minimalist habit, so I'll put it in tier C. Uniform. It's definitely a good way for us to cut down on daily decision. I love this concept, but I don't think I need to create a uniform for myself because all my wardrobe is mostly black. And it already makes everything easier when it comes to dressing up. However, this kind of practice might be too extreme for a lot of people. So I think this will go to tier B. On the other hand, capsule wardrobe is way more versatile and that can apply to anyone's lifestyle. It's the best way one can downsize their wardrobe and set a specific number of clothes you are allowed to own. 
And in order for them to be versatile, they need to be able to mix and match and give us multiple looks despite having fewer clothes. I think it's easy to execute and allows us to downsize our most cluttered area, which is our wardrobe. So I'll put it in tier A. Monochromatic colors. Some might think being a minimalist is as easy as coordinating your living space with monochromatic colors, black, white, or maybe nude pastel color. I agree, monochromatic colors can be easier to match and pleasant to look at, but they are nothing more than personal style and a preference. So I'll put it in tier C because the benefits aren't substantial enough to be in a higher tier. Ignoring trends. When it comes to the things we purchase, we want them to last as long as possible. The ability to ignore trend is an excellent skill to have when it comes to minimalism. Because if we buy things for its trendiness, it will be short-lived. But I know, it's hard for us to identify whether is it trend or whether is it impulse. But I'll say this awareness is a life-changing realization for me when it comes to my purchasing habit. And so that's the reason why I'll put it in tier S. If a chore can be complete in 3 minutes, do it right away. This simple habit kind of ingrained in my DNA. When it comes to simple and easy chore, I want to complete it right away. For example, washing dishes or cleaning my room. I hate to leave them hanging and it irritates me when I leave them undone. I think it's not life changing but it's a good way to prevent ourselves from piling chores out and I'll put it in tier A. Like the previous point, we can also put things back to its original spot. That can save us a lot of time and the fatigue of looking through the mess we created. I'll put this in tier A. Make use of what you have. There's no need for me to keep up with the Joneses if I'm not impressed by the Joneses. Knowing the fact that I'm already enough is the best thing I learned from minimalism. And it's also the best way for me to curb impulsive purchase because I can make the full use of what I already have instead of buying something new. I would say this awareness is priceless and it deserves to be in tier S. Removing labels from our possessions can be time consuming, but yet the results can be insignificant. They do remove visual clutter, but it's almost impossible for us to avoid logos and labels. So why not embrace it? That's the reason why I put this in tier C because I find that the result is insignificant and it's not worth trying. Practice gratitude. This sounds generic because whether you are a minimalist or not, it's important for us to practice gratitude and stay grounded. It's a great way to remove the need to compare ourselves with others, prevent us from buying things just to impress people, and declutter a huge chunk of negativity out of my brain. So this deserves a tier S. Embracing negative space is a reminder for ourselves that not all empty surfaces should be occupied. Empty space can be something that complements other things around it, or even better, something we can appreciate. However, even though I like this concept, I would still classify this as tier C because it's nothing more than a style or a preference of how you want your living space to be. Saying no. The ability to say no at the right time is crucial for a minimalist. Whether it's rejecting gifts you don't like, or saying no to projects when you are already packed. So in order for us to do more of what we value, we have to say no to the things that don't align with us. So this will go to tier S for how vital it is. Focus on a single task. I'll say this is an extreme version of rule of three, and when it comes to productivity, less is more. By focusing on a single task, it's way more productive than multitasking through various projects. I'll put it in tier A because it's beneficial but not thought provoking enough to be in tier S. Being busy is not being productive. We need to know the difference between busyness and productivity. We can be busy and have no time for what we value, but we can be productive and dedicate time for whatever we appreciate. So the whole mindset of rejecting busyness is a tier S realization for me. Lastly, slowing down is for everyone, not just the minimalist, because we need to know that packing our life to the extreme fullest doesn't mean that we will enjoy it. Learning how to slow down allows us to take time to enjoy every single moment. So this is definitely a tier S. So that's how I rank those minimalist challenges, habits, and guidelines. I know they are based on my own preference, but I try to distribute them fairly across different tiers based on how effective they are, how easy they are to execute 
for everyone. And I hope that can help you filter out what are some of those habits that are worth trying and what's not. I actually have more in this list, but I have to cut it short because of time constraint. So if this video performs well, I might consider making a second episode for this or even a specific episode for digital minimalism. And if you enjoyed it, I hope you can push this video by clicking the like button. That will help a lot when it comes to small creators like me on YouTube. I'm grateful for that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again next week. Bye bye.